What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Braden Carlson. In today's episode, I'm going to be outlining the build and flight of a rocket called the Bobs. The Bobs is a 98 millimeter carbon fiber rocket that flew on an Aerotech N1000 at Balls in Black Rock, Nevada. It is, as of the recording of this video, the highest flight I have ever flown and recovered. And we got some spectacular onboard video, which you saw a little bit of in the intro, and we'll get to that a little bit later. I'm going to cut it to voice over me and explain the whole process of building this rocket, but first I want to thank the sponsor of this video and this entire project, Great Western Buildings. Great Western Buildings is a manufacturer of pre-engineered steel buildings that serve a wide variety of uses from backyard garages to airplane hangars spanning hundreds of feet, agricultural buildings, and whatever else you could imagine. They are designed and manufactured in Colorado using American steel, and you get factory direct pricing. So. If you are after a new building for your property, whether you need something small just to house a garage or build some rockets in, or you need something massive, Great Western Buildings can provide you with what you need. This has been a long ongoing process. I wanna say thank you to the Great Western Buildings team for this opportunity and for being patient with how long it actually took to get this thing situated and flown. Check out the link in the description to visit the Great Western Buildings website and see what they're all about. Now, one last thank you before I kick it into voiceover me. I wanna say thank you to our friends at wildmanrocketry.com for also contributing to making this project possible. Whether you're just getting started in high power rocketry or you're a seasoned veteran flying N and O motors, wildmanrocketry.com has everything that you need so check them out support the people that support me now that's enough of my yapping here's more of me yapping but with cooler things to look at the bob started life as a standard wildman falcon 98 kit however i made some adjustments to maximize performance with the n1000 we'd be flying it on namely i made it shorter and swapped out the carbon fiber coupler in the nose cone for a fiberglass one for the sake of rf transparency for our gps tracker the rocket uses a 4 inch diameter filament wound carbon fiber tube and 3 16 inch quasi isotropic carbon fiber plate for the fins it's very light and very strong still that doesn't mean i didn't need to take precautions to ensure it was built strong enough to handle the projected speed over mach 2. We'll get to that, but first, let's start with the basics. I assembled the rocket motor to ensure I had accurate measurements of the case and everything fully assembled. The coupler in this rocket is glued into the top of the airframe with a hole in the bottom bulk plate so I could bolt the motor case in and retain it. This meant I needed to measure far more than twice before I started cutting because the tube costs about $77 per foot. Messing up the cut can be a costly mistake. You can see here that I'm using the nose cone to see how far into its shoulder the coupler goes before marking it and bolting the electronics bay assembly to the top of the motor case. After repeatedly measuring and having my cousin Shane, or as you may know him, Postart, verify that I was measuring things correctly, I marked the tube with a tube wrapping guide and a silver permanent marker, then cut it freehand with an angle grinder and a diamond cutoff wheel. Just like that, the scary part's over. It was a pretty dang straight cut, if I do say so myself. I did have to clean it up a little bit on my belt sander, but other than that, it was pretty good to go. From there, it was standard business as usual. I meticulously sanded the airframe and fins with 120 grit sandpaper and cleaned all bonding surfaces with 99.9% .9 pure isopropyl alcohol, or IPA as you may hear it referred to in the rocketry community. Shout out to the homie Joe from BPS Space for hooking me up with some on a short notice for this build. The goal here is to make as ideal a bonding surface as possible by way of making it appropriately coarse and clean. Making many passes over the parts with alcohol until the shop towels come out clean is the name of the game here. From there, I whipped out my custom made modular fin alignment guide from hprtools.com. Full disclosure, my cousin is indeed the owner of this website, but his killer design work is definitely worth it and you should grab yourself some fin and tube marking guides because they're awesome. Anyway, I bonded all four fins of the airframe using JB Quick Weld. You'll notice I'm wearing gloves from here on out as I don't want the oils from my fingers to interfere with the composite bonding in any way. 
It's not often shown on camera, but I did also clean each part meticulously again and again between steps with IPA to ensure I'm not contaminating any components. Once all the fins were tacked in place, it was time for the step that really decides whether or not this rocket survives its supersonic ascent. I re-sanded and re-prepped the airframe and fins and masked off my fillets. Using the general rule of thumb that your fillet should be in the range of 4-8% to of your fins root length, I landed on a radius of about 3 quarters of an inch for my fillets. To achieve this, I used the rounded portion of a 45 degree 2 inch PVC elbow. With my filleting tool as a guide, I marked off the edges of my fillets with masking tape and mixed up a healthy 116 gram batch of Proline 4500 high temp epoxy that I got from Wildman. Before I put it on the rocket though, I put it in a vacuum chamber and allowed it to degas for about 10 minutes. This ensures that any air introduced in the storage or mixing process is removed. Air in your epoxy weakens it and while bubbles may not be visible to the naked eye, there can be thousands of microscopic bubbles weakening your epoxy without your express written consent. So we degas it to do our best to prevent this. Finally, I did my best to pour the epoxy into place for fillets to prevent reintroducing any air. Almost certainly there is some air being reintroduced here, but outside of vacuuming the fillets once they're on the rocket, this is the best I can do. After pouring the epoxy in, I used my piece of PVC to pull and shape the fillets, then I simply rinse and repeat until all 8 fillets are done. With fillets out of the way, it's time for the electronics bay package. This is pretty standard as I drilled out the fiberglass bulk plates for quarter 20 all thread and my brass charge cannons. For more info on charge cannons and how they work, you can check out my video of my JB Weld M1675 rocket in the top right corner. The big challenge with this particular electronics bay though is the onboard video. I didn't want to add anything to the outside of the rocket for aerodynamic reasons, which meant taking some meticulous measurements and putting a big old hole in the side of the rocket. Fortunately, this was made a bit easier with this killer custom electronics based sled from HPRtools.com that integrates the camera and has holes to access the buttons from the top of the electronics bay. I did have to reshape the hole with a Dremel just a bit because I missed my mark a hair when I was drilling the hole. Overall though, it came out pretty solid. From here, I began ground testing the recovery system. Five, four, three, two, one. If you're not familiar, on my tube fin rocket that I built to test all this electronic stuff for this rocket, I ran into some issues with the main parachute coming out at the top despite using a pair of Tinder Piranha cable cutters. After a few ground tests with the same result, I landed on the conclusion that the cable ties being so tight must cause them to erupt from the sudden concussion of my charge cannon. So I switched to the wax coated cord that comes with the cable cutter kit as an alternative and huzzah! It stayed together and I was certain I had found my solution. Three, two, one. Looks like it cut it. Things were getting down to the wire so I don't have any footage of painting it. I used a can of emerald green metallic flake over the carbon fiber then covered the whole shebang with two component spray max clear coat in hopes that it wouldn't cook off as severely as my M1675 rocket did. Here's some looks at it sitting out of the Black Rock Desert, but now all that's left to do is fly it.
not convinced how much of this I want to show. <laughs> <laughs> We're just looking for an ETA to see if we can send people to A to set up or if they're just about wrapped up. There we go. On the D cells, D3 is Bra Braden Carlson from Victorville, California. Rocket is called the Bobs. It's going to fly on an N1000. It's got Blue Raven, Easy Mini, and a Featherweight GPS on board. Uh, Estimated altitude 54,000 feet. So let's keep an eye on that. We're going to do a uh, N1000 over on the D pads. It's pad D3 is armed and ready to go in five, four, three, two, one. It's up, and it's off to the east and maybe a little back toward the range head. Let's keep an eye on that. Now, with those beautiful views, I wish that I could say that this flight went off completely fine without a hitch, but that's just not how it goes on Rocket Vlogs. Those pesky cable tie cutters that we were just talking about right before the flight. Well, if you watch the video closely, you can see that they worked great and the parachute stayed all bundled up and perfect exactly as it should have for about 10 seconds when it appears the shock cord gave it a good yank broke our wax cord solution and released my main parachute at about 47,000 feet. According to the GPS package we were receiving at one point, the rocket was moving horizontally at 120 feet per second. Needless to say, it landed very, very far away. What it did do though was land on top of a mountain. Fortunately, I got to record some awesome footage of the recovery of it, which I'm going to run now. Hey Eric, I got an idea. Let's do a minimum diameter N1000. <laughs> yeah. I'll make the cable cutters work for sure. Oh God. My ears are going to explode. The California, my year in California did not do me any favors in the elevation. But we've made it about a mile and a half from where we parked the van. We hear it. Do a shout out to the LL tracker. Those batteries, my God, they're expensive, but right there, dude. 
Straight ahead. I see it. Oh my God. <laughs> I see it. There it is. There's the nose comb. Oh, it's got a crazy mock rash. Yes, dude. Holy f Now we can officially hand it off to Eric. Look at it like melted and balled it up a little. That's insane. All right, Eric. Moment of truth. Time for the official handoff. Oh, cool. Take it home. I'm taking it home. We, it's, going, it's going on the wall. Now the only thing I can do is go higher. It's time. Start building my N1560 rocket. Now about that GPS, right before the rocket took off, my phone died. Fortunately, Taylor, my friend, if you're familiar with the channel, co-host of the Anti-Gravity Group podcast, uh, had connected to my ground station, so he reconnected to it and we started getting live packets back. But because of that transition, the data in between is gone. We have no GPS max altitude reading. So we're going to have to go with the barometer, the Easy Mini, in particular, one of the onboard computers had a total altitude of, I can't remember the exact number. I am more than thrilled with this altitude, more than thrilled that we got the rocket back, and most of all, just over the moon with how phenomenal this onboard footage is. It's easy to get lost in the world of high power rocketry. I have several friends that have flown rockets 100,000 feet or higher. I have friends that have put a rocket in space. So it's easy for me to think 47,000 feet feels like small peanuts, but it was over 25,000 feet higher than my second highest recovered flight. This rocket went Mach 2 with just proline fillets, degas, no additional carbon fiber layup. I'm really proud of how great it came out. I'm really, really glad we got the rocket back. As you can see, it's not here. It's now hanging up at its new home at the Great Western Buildings headquarters in Grand Junction, Colorado. However, Eric, the owner of Great Western Buildings, is now level three certified as well. And there's been some chatter about this rocket flying again. So I guess we'll just have to see. Thank you so much for tuning in to an episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Braden Carlson. And if you wanna keep up with all the crazy rocket stuff that I've got going on, be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the little notification bell. If you wanna help support more rocket content coming out, you can check out patreon.com slash rocket vlogs or click the join button below and join the names scrolling across your screen right now. I have a ton of other rocket content, whether it be launches, hundreds of flights, or just specialty project stuff like this. So please, if you enjoyed this video, go check it out, press the like button. And like I said in the clip, when I handed the rocket off to Eric, all we can do next year is head back to Black Rock and go higher. And I have quite a project planned for exactly that. So if you wanna see what's coming up, um, press the subscribe button, like I said, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.